Okay, so we are looking at uh, downward link today. So this should be following on from what I'm talking about in class. Um, so we looked at direct and inverse variation and the graphs uh, which flow. And what we should see is that with power regression, um, if the uh, value here of B is positive, then it's going to be direct variation. And if it's negative, it'll be inverse variation. We can see that from these graphs here. So these are all the ones for direct variation. And you'll note, all, it's all positive. X to power 3, X to power 2. So all those uh, indices there, they are all, all positive. But here, for inverse variation, we could rewrite that using your amazing knowledge of uh, index laws as KX to the power of minus a half. And this one could be KX to the power of minus 1. So, when a, uh, when a uh, model is in this form, then you can quickly recognize by the value of B. If it's positive, it'd be direct variation. If it's negative, it'd be inverse variation, which is useful. Now, you can use your uh, GDC to come up with the uh, best model um, using a power modeling function, which is a potential question which could come up. And we'll also discuss a little bit um, one of the uses of this R value here as well later on. Not R squared though, sorry. So here is one I've done earlier. These are the uh, points I put in for H and M. Look how I've beautifully written H and M up here. Um, I'm going to find a blank cell and hopefully we'll come up with a uh, power regression model that will match the one we've got uh, in the textbook answers. So you go to statistics, stat calculations, you should be pretty good at this now. And you don't have to look far for it, there it is, power regression, bosh. Now, be sure you know which one's X and which one's Y. So here, this would be your X values, and these would be your Y values, so X is H. So let's make sure we get this right, so X is H. So Y is the other one, which is M. And then, bosh, you just click there. You don't click on anything else. So hopefully these will match up. So A, the coefficient of X is 0 0.12. And B, the power here is 3, which should match, match, match up with the uh, numbers here. So if you wanted to write it out, though, you would do as so. Sorry, I'm scrambling around for my little pen thing. So it is not Y, it is, in this case, uh, M. So you would write M equals, and A is given here. You've also got something that's very similar on your calculator. So it'd be 0 0.12. And then we haven't got X, we have H uh, to the power of B, which is here, which is 3. So you could write it out then, uh, the model like that. Right. Okay, so the next example is this one then. Uh, it's a bit different. We're plotting the graphs of V, which is, or sorry, R, which is air resistance, against V, which is velocity. We're going to do also do R against V squared and R against V cubed. And of the three, we should be able to deduce what the uh, approximate model for R in terms of V is. So which one's the best one out of those three? Um, in order to plot these, we can again use our GDC. So you can just put the values in. Please note how I've done V and R here. Now we're going to need to plot uh, V squared as well and V cubed. I don't think you can use the power symbol, so I'm just using V2, V3 to represent that. Because uh, this is a spread spreadsheet, you can you know, use it as a spreadsheet. So if I want to square my V values here, so I've got that, and then just do to the power of 2. So to the power of two, and then press enter. And what you can do, and you can do this, it's a bit easier for me on the laptop, I must admit, but you should be able to hover over that and also uh, drag it down. Obviously, you might find it easier just to do it manually um, and just put them in. It you know, won't take that long. They're not going to give you that many values. But it's an option if you get pretty good at this sort of thing. Uh, same thing here. So again, we're cubing V. So uh, cell A1 to the power of three. And again, I am going to go to the corner here and I'm going to drag it down. 
So I've got all my values for the three graphs I'm going to plot on my GDC. Obviously, you can do this manually as well. I don't think it will come up in a non-calculated paper, but uh, you could find these values uh, without a calculator. Right, let's go back to the question then. We are going to find, let's plot, first of all, uh, is it R against V or V against R? R against V. Now, you can do this, one way of doing it is to go to control and then go to uh, doc and you can go to add data and statistics. So this will immediately plot your points for you. And then you can click here to choose the axis. So you've done something similar with scatter graphs uh, previously. So I do believe this was R, was it not? And on this one, it is V. So there's your first graph. So it gives you a nice idea of what it would look like. You would have to join it up with a smooth curve in your sketch deck. Uh, you, you have got an option, actually, to connect the data points, but I don't, I'm not aware of a way you can put in a lovely smooth curve there. I'll have to look into that. Right, now we've got, we sorted that one out, but we can also then change the uh, x-axis here to V squared. Look at that. So... We can see there that uh, it's shifted the points very suddenly. It's getting a bit closer to a linear relationship. Well, look at this. If we plot it against VQ. Bosh. So if we plot R against VQ, it actually does give us a linear relationship. So that is the going to be the uh, model then for R in terms of V. Because uh, it does give us a linear relationship. So... This gives you a better idea of what they'd look like. So it's the same thing, same values there, but you can see how they've used a, a smoother curve to join them up. And then the last one there is a uh, straight line. You can see it's good practice here, making sure that you've you know, clearly plotted, labeled all those points, labeled uh, or put numbers on your axes and labeled them as well R, in that last case, B cubed. So, so we should be able to use our GDC to uh, work out what that best model was as well, rather than going through uh, those, plotting those three graphs and seeing it more visually. Um, we should be able to use power regression. So let's try and do that. So going to statistics, stat calculations, power regression, and remind myself which one's V, or which one's X, and which one's uh, Y. So X is V. And Y is R, and then you just click on OK. And there we go. So that's given us that best model there. So A is the coefficient of X is 0 0.0005, and B is the power of 3. But when it asks us something like this, find the power model that best fits the following data, your calculator, as we'll do one last time, shall we? Is there any point? Let's do it anyway. So, so this is so, so this is what we've been doing then. Uh, when you're finding the power model that best fits uh, the data, it is manipulating the data to give us a straight line such as that. So this is what so this is what's happening when it's asking us to find a power model that best fits the following data when manipulating it uh, changing it into a power equation which then gives us a relationship like the one that we saw here so most of the times all you're doing is popping them into a uh, linear reg linear regression into the power regression tool on your GDC and it will give you the uh, Equation. So let's do one last one, uh, which is set up here, because we haven't done an inverse one yet. So let's do that. So this is the last one. And again, statistics, stat calculations, power regression. Uh, make sure you know which one's X and which one's Y. Oh, that's easy. Is X and Y. Okay, thanks. So we've got X and Y. Pop them in. Here we go. And two things here to see that it is a uh, 
inverse regression, in, inverse uh, variation, it the power here b is negative, and also r will be negative as well. You can see it's very close fit. Um, okay, so that should match the answer that we've got here. So there we go. The coefficient of the x should be 26.3, and it is. Remember, three significant figures, and the power is minus 3.02. So what we're anticipating then is if I plot y against this, I'm going to get a straight line, and therefore that will that gives me uh, the best fit. So let's have a look. You don't have to do this as far as I'm aware. This is just to show you that it works. Right, so first of all, I'm going to show you what x plotting x against y looks like, and you'd expect that. You get a nice little... Uh, Inverse variation there, lovely. Then, if I instead plot uh, y against this, the power of the power equation here, so it's twenty six point two six two nine times x to the power of minus three point zero one blah blah blah. Uh, you get this. Oops, I don't I'll spot the surprise. You get this. So you can see we get that lovely straight line there. That's it, really. 